extrapyramidal symptoms as the topic, and uh, abbreviated EPS. And extrapyramidal symptoms are essentially um, side effects of antipsychotic medications uh, that can occur. And these are commonly tested on the licensing exams. There's four types, and I'll try to go through all four and describe each of the four types, and then I'll tell you how each of the four types is uh, dealt with in terms of treatment or management. So the first of the four types of uh, extrapyramidal symptoms is something called dystonia. And um, the typical scenario is that some patient that is uh, being treated for, let's say, some psychiatric disorder, perhaps schizophrenia, is placed on an antipsychotic medication, and then shortly afterwards develops dystonia. So what happens? What is dystonia? Well, dystonia is described as sort of a, an acute muscle stiffness or muscle rigidity uh, that can occur. And also, uh, there's uh, spasms of the body, and um, the patient can also demonstrate uh, some uh, weird eye, eye movements uh, known as eye deviations. And that's uh, basically dystonia. So think of like a muscle spasm or muscle stiffness or um, um, some sort of a forced deviation of the eyes. Now, this is treated with um, an anticholinergic medication. Anticholinergic. And that medication is benztropine. And benztropine uh, will help... Um, with these symptoms and it's most commonly given as an I am shot so remember that and that's actually important and the next type of extrapyramidal symptom that can happen with the treatment um, of some sort of uh, antipsychotic medication is something known as akathisia now what's akathisia is uh, the best way to think about it is a person who just can't sit still restlessness very restless unable to sit still also, this patient will probably stand up and sit down, stand up and sit down uh, many times, pace around constantly. And um, this is a rather worrisome, troublesome side effect of uh, being treated with an antipsychotic medication. But this can be treated, fortunately, by calming the patient down with a benzodiazepine, lorazepam. The third type of uh, EPS, extrapyramidal symptom, is something known as Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism, and the the reason this happens is antipsychotic medications basically work by uh, lowering dopamine levels. So they lower the dopamine level in the brain. Now, when you have this iatrogenic lowering of the dopamine in the brain, you can develop actually Parkinsonism, which is essentially a condition that occurs with low dopamine levels. So you've actually caused Parkinsonism with this uh, antipsychotic medication. A terrible side effect. Now the symptoms of Parkinsonism, uh, without going into too much detail, a lot of this is uh, very characteristic. You'll see something called a shuffling gait, uh, something called mask facies. And what's mask facies? Mass facies is basically an expressionless, expressionless uh, f uh, face. That's what mask facies means. Um, the, the the person may also exhibit some drooling, and um, the patient will also experience uh, some sort of um, rigidity or tremor. Um, rigidity or tremor. So these are some of the um, characteristic findings of Parkinsonism. How do you treat this? Well, uh, you can symptom symptomatology or the symptomatic treatment of this involves either an antihistamine, uh, such as um, a diphenhydramine, or uh, or an anticholinergic, such as benztropine. So that's how this is treated. And then the uh, final uh, EPS, 
the fourth and final one, is known as tardive dyskinesia. And what's tardive dyskinesia? The best way to describe this is basically um, involuntary movements of the oral facial muscles. And I'll, I'll give you some examples. The first one, um, for example, is uh, tongue. The tongue will protrude um, involuntarily, so it's a rather embarrassing problem. Another one is uh, involuntary puckering. Puckering is like, for example, you know, when people pucker their lips before they're about to kiss somebody. That's what puckering means. Uh, another thing that can happen is uh, chewing, involuntarily, of course, uh, and then grimacing. So these are some unfortunate, kind of bothersome side effects that are all characterized as tardive dyskinesia. Treatment of this, what is it? Unfortunately, there's no medication that treats tardive dyskinesia. If a patient develops tardive dyskinesia while on antipsychotic medications, the only option you really have is to take them off the current antipsychotic and switch to another uh, uh, antipsychotic, such as clozapine. Uh, switch to a, basically an atypical, an atypical antipsychotic medicine, such as clozapine. Uh, there's another one called risperidone, and that's really the only way you can treat or manage this. So let's uh, take a look at some vignettes. A 35-year-old man is brought to the emergency um, clinic by his mother because of an episode of slurred speech associated with the, the uncomfortable sensation that his tongue is thick and curling up. The episode started 30 minutes ago. The patient is noted to be holding on to his tongue and thumb with his forefinger. When asked about this, the patient responds with dysarthria, saying that his medication has caused this once before and that he needs a shot to make it go away. The mother reports that the patient had schizophrenia for 10 years and constantly, consistently takes two medications prescribed by the psychiatrist. Several days ago, he ran out of one of the medications but has continued to take the other one. What is the most appropriate initial step in the management of this patient? <clears throat> Well, it's clear that this patient is experiencing some sort of EPS, and the EPS, the extrapyramidal symptom that he's associated, um, th that he's experiencing actually, is a dystonia type reaction. And um, this uh, question actually is interesting that um, he's already told you that he needs a shot to make it go away. And the shot that he needs is a medication that is an anticholinergic, and it's benztropine. And that I am shot of benztropine will be the solution to this, and that would be B. The next question. A 64-year-old man is undergoing inpatient psychiatric treatment with haloperidol. After several days of therapy, the patient complains that he feels very restless and agitated and he cannot stop moving his legs. He paces constantly, sits and then stands, and is unable to sit still. Which of the following medication, if given during his initial regimen, might have best prevented this reaction? Uh, this is a perfect example of someone experiencing akathisia. And akathisia is treated with benzodiazepine, such as lorazepam. So that would be the answer there. And the last one, a 54-year-old man, a woman, sorry, uh, presents to her primary care physician for routine yearly health maintenance exam. She denies any medical problems. Only significant medical history includes a 25-year history, only significant medical history, which has been well controlled with antipsychotic agents. Five-year history of hypertension, for which she takes a diuretic. Vital signs and physical exam within normal limits. However, the patient has noted an occasional irregular puckering and lip smacking movements. She denies having noticed uh, the abnormal movements um, and her speech is normal. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, now this is a good question. 
uh, where she has these involuntary movements um, of the oral uh, facial muscles and um, it, the puckering and the lip smacking movements are really the the ones described in this uh, uh, clinical vignette and this is basically tardive dyskinesia and tardive dyskinesia is managed by discontinuing um, the current medication and switching to another one uh, such as clozapine or risperidone.